I'm so excited for our last video of the series because we get to put everything together now. The vector database, the vector embeddings, the LLM prompt, and build the simplest little sort of chat program against our content. You get to see it all come together, but we built it step by step. So you can now take this and start playing with it yourself. So let's, let's get into the program. Okay. So in example seven, we're going to put it all together here. So let's take a look at our run function. So what are we doing? I'm essentially asking, I'm, I'm creating an input prompt, ask Bill a question about go. And then we're going to read the question in right there from the command line. Now, I wrote this originally, it might take a minute or more because originally I was running Olama in a Docker container and it was taking a minute or more. But uh, now that we're running it natively outside of Docker, it won't take that long. Um, but I still give it a large sort of amount of time to, to chunk through it. But like I said, unless you're going to run it in Docker, we should be fine. Now, what we're going to do is perform a vector search against the question. We're going to see that code in a second. We're going to essentially have to vectorize the question, then do a vector search between that vector based on the question and what's in the database, find the most similar chunks related to the content in the question. And then we're going to take the results of the vector search, pass that to this function called question response, which will take the chunk we choose, pass it to the LLM with that prompt you saw before, and the prompt will magically give us, I think, a reasonable answer based on the book. So we're only as good as the content that we're basically working with and searching, right? So here's vector search. I'm going to connect to Olama using um, the Langchain Go again. We're going to use the embedded, the same embedding model that we use. So the big problem here is that if you decide you want to play with a different embedding model, then all the vectors that you currently have in the database have to be re recreated. Okay. A vector from one vector, uh, one embedding model isn't going to be usable with a different one. So the, those two things have to be in sync. So just remember that. So we're going to connect to Olama. I'm going to take the question and we're going to create an embedding from that. So we're going to get that vector, those 1024 um, floating point number vector. Then once I have that, I'm going to connect to Mongo. You might say, Bill, why didn't you do all this in main? It's a, a small little toy app. So we're not going to feel all of this in our little toy app here, right? All right. So I'm going to connect to Mongo, same database, same collection. There it is. And then we're going to leverage the, the pipeline command for Mongo to do this. So we're going to do a vector search. There it is um, against this embedding, which we got from the question. And then I'm telling Mongo the project means give me back ID, text, embedding, and give me a vector search score. Like how close, right? We did that cosine similarity. How close is this chunk to the embedding? I'm also asking Mongo to give me back the top five chunks in this case, we can sort of look at that and explore that. Um, but sorted, give me the top five chunks that you think were most relevant. Maybe we want to feed the LLM two chunks instead of one. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what we do here. The aggregate call lets us execute this pipeline query. And we get back five search results from the vector database um, in that sorting order of score. Okay, brilliant. Now we've got the results. The next step is the question response. So we're going to pass in those results with the question. I'm going to connect to the Llama 3.2. Remember this prompt from a previous video. The context is going to be the chunks. The question um, is the question that we were asked. Everything else is the same with our prompt. And now look at what I did here in this particular case. So I'm, I'm going to range over the results. I'm going to say if the score is greater than or equal to 70%, essentially if the algorithm says that the vector for the question, um, comparing it to this chunk, is 70% of a similarity or greater, we'll use that chunk. And so I'm going to 
write that chunk into my string builder. I'm then counting how many words um, we, we currently have in that string builder. And if we've got more than a thousand words at that point, I stop. So essentially what this logic is saying is, is I don't want to feed the LLM more than a thousand words at a time that I feel at least right now that a thousand words of content that's similar to the question should be enough to form a proper response. Now I don't cut the chunk in half here. So there could be more than a thousand words depending on the these chunks, but at least I'm in this particular case, this strategy, it's not going to be the best strategy for everything, but in this strategy, what I'm saying is I'd like to give it at least a thousand words. I'll give it as many chunks as I can up to um, a thousand words or, or just a little bit more. And that's why I'm bringing back five. Now, maybe I just bring back one and I only give it the one chunk. Again, this is something you would have to play with for your content and your chunking strategy. Okay, so we now have these chunks. So I'll convert the, the content that we're going to use to a string. Make sure that we got something back. And then I'm going to put that content in the question in that prompt that we had up there using the sprintf. We now have a final prompt with everything we need to go talk to the LLM. So we use that same call that we did before with our prompt streaming function and send the result back. Okay, this is really exciting right now because we've got the book, we've chunked it, we've put it in the vector database. We can now accept a question. We can vectorize that. We can do a similarity search. We can take the most similar content, feed it to the LLM with our question and the LLM should give us an answer. So let's see now what happens here. If I do make example seven. Okay, ask Bill a, a question about Go. So maybe the question is, um, what, what's a good question? Um, when should I use an interface? I have no idea what the answer is going to be, but let's see what happens. So I see Olama's doing some things. Okay, we just got a response back. So this will be based on the, the chunks that we got back. Let's see how the answer is. Okay, to determine when to use an interface, consider the following guidelines. So for sure, um, it took that out of my book, didn't it? It found this content in the book and it looks like a very sort of intelligent answer. It also looks and feels like something I would say, which is good because that's what I want, right? You, you, you're taking it out of my book, I want it to feel that way. I mean. That's super cool, right? Now we could do a couple of things too before I run it again. Cause I'm kind of curious, like when we did this sort of what chunks came back. So maybe what I'll do here is we'll display the um, content here just so we can see it, right? So I'll do like this. You can see what content we got out of the um, system. There's our content. It would also be interesting though, now that I think about it, that's our search results. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put it in here because I'd like to also not just have the text for our purposes here. I'd like to see what the score was. Okay, I'm just curious just to print that out and we'll um, we'll see what happens. All right, so let's run it again. I might ask a question about um, interfaces. Maybe this time I'll ask about, um, uh, maybe we can ask about what is the, the best way to declare a variable. I don't know if I've got proper code um, examples in these chunks, but let's see what happens. So you can see I'm getting some code examples out of here too, but let's go back to the beginning. So um, what is the best way to declare a variable? So you can see the chunks. So you can see the vector database said this is an 86% similarity. And you can see the chunk that came out. It's not formatted code in any way, but here's the content. So this is a a chunk of content that we fed the LLM. Um, here's another one, 83%. We haven't gotten to a thousand words yet. 
This one was 83% too. So it looks like we've given the LLM three, oh, look, here's four chunks. And then here's another one here, best practices. So actually, no, that was the answer. So it looks like we gave four chunks to the LLM anywhere from 86 to an 83% similarity. The LLM took that content and produced this answer. Best practice was declaring variables in Go. And it actually gave me code using like proper syntax and formatting. How cool is that? Um, with the examples that it got out of the book. You could see how like powerful these LLMs can be, especially when you're going to be mixing um, your own content with it. And so what we now have here is a full blown example of how you can write your own rag based um, LLM apps using your own content. Now, again, I'm using Olama here because it doesn't cost me anything to do that. And I would definitely recommend to play with Olama right from the beginning. Even though those models may not be as powerful as the ones in the cloud, they're good enough to get you started. And then when you're ready, when you feel like you've got it a little bit polished, then you can start playing with those cloud models. Now, you know, you're, what you're paying for is it's, it's, it's a little more known, right? You'll have to tweak these things anytime you play with a different model. If you're changing your embedding model, you got to, again, re-vectorize everything that you're doing. Remember that. But you now hopefully understand how this technology works from content to vectorizing to, to running those through an LLM. And uh, you can also see how scary and powerful these LLMs can be for this kind of stuff. So I hope these seven videos have sort of helped you. All of the code is there at github.com on labs slash AI dash training. You have it there. You can run it. Definitely reach out, bill at ardenlabs.com if you run into any problems or trouble. Um, and I hope you can take this code and play with it. It's, it's a lot of fun. I also have in this repo a uh, initial version of a Connect 4 game. I've got a production version we're going to have out on ArnLabs.ai real soon. Um, but the idea is I'm going to have some training classes on how to teach you how to build a game like Connect 4 using vector databases and LLMs. But the code is there. You can already start sort of looking at it and studying it. And I think the code there will be familiar to you if you've gone through the, the series of these seven videos. So I hope to hear from everybody. I hope this content can help you get you on your way. And if you're doing any AI sort of projects, LLM, RAG, based, vectorized based projects, and you feel like you need a little help, hey, I'm available. That's what I'm here for. And I'd love to help you out on anything you're doing at work. So I'm Bill Kennedy. Hope you enjoyed this series. I hope to hear from everybody soon.